Good morning, and once again, welcome to worship this morning at St. Paul Lutheran Church here in Hubbard Lake, Michigan. It is exciting because today is the day that we recognize and celebrate the Reformation, which really isn't until the 31st of October, but um, today is the Sunday before, so uh, we celebrate that this morning. There's lots of other things that are going on today in person. Today is also confirmation, so our confirmands uh, will be gathering this morning um, at church to, um, to confess their faith publicly and openly, and as they are confirmed in their baptismal faith, that will be taking place this morning. Also, for, for you and for us that are here in person this morning, um, it is also Commitment Sunday. And so it's an opportunity for us as the followers of Jesus, as the body of Christ, um, to make our commitments to the Lord over this next year, recognizing that um, God has given us everything and these gifts he has called us to be faithful caretakers of them. And so um, this is an opportunity for today for us to make that commitment. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later on in worship this morning. We want to, to ask you and to remind you um, that while you are worshiping with us online, it is indeed a worship service. And so we really, really want to encourage you to sing the hymns with us, to follow along in the liturgy and the prayers and even the scripture reading this morning as that takes place during our worship time together. Also, say hello. Say hello to the people that are worshiping with you right now. Um, share the peace of Christ with them. Maybe ask them how it is that you can pray for them over this next week. Um, because a lot of these folks are in the same position that you are, um, as you are not able to gather with us um, during this time. All of that being said, um, we are going to begin our time of worship this morning with an awesome hymn, Thy Strong Word. Hallelujah, 
and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God is our refuge and strength. Therefore, we will not fear. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift. If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Let us confess our sins unto God our Heavenly Father. Lord of hosts, hear our confession of sins and grant us your mercy and forgiveness. We have not trusted in your promised protection and strength, but have looked elsewhere for help and refuge. You alone have provided the remedy for that which truly causes our separation, troubles, and death. For the sake of Christ, your Son, our Redeemer, grant us forgiveness and deliverance from all that would keep us from your present help. We ask it in the name of Jesus. Amen. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. Because that river of grace and power has flowed over us in our baptism into the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, in spite of our fear, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. By grace, God has created each of us and everything that exists. And in the person of his Son, he entered into human history and paid for our, for our sin and for every sin itself. In Christ's resurrection, God promises have been made sure for us. And so as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Church is one. 
Let us pray. Almighty and gracious Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep us steadfast in your grace and truth. Protect and deliver us in times of temptation. Defend us against all enemies. And grant to your church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading comes from the book of Revelation, chapter 14, beginning at the sixth verse. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him who made heaven and earth the sea, and the springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle lesson comes from Paul's letter to the church in Rome, chapter 3. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped, and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood, to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time, so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By a law of works? No but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. This too is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'm saved, grace free. 
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the eighth chapter. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham, and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, Everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Together, let us confess our faith boldly in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. i 
grace, mercy, and peace be to you from Christ alone, who has saved us by grace alone, through faith alone. Amen. Our text that we're going to be looking at this morning is the gospel lesson from John chapter 8, beginning at verse 31. This will serve as our text. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are indeed saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus alone. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the reminder of the gospel. We need to hear it, Lord, because we know that we are indeed sinful human beings, sinners who do not deserve your grace and mercy, but everlasting condemnation and damnation, Lord. But Lord, we approach your throne of grace this morning and know that you give us your gifts of mercy and grace. You extend them to us, and by those gifts we are indeed brought salvation, life, and forgiveness of all of our sins. Help us, Heavenly Father, to know that your love is unconditional for us, but you have called us as your people to truly live as your disciples, to follow you and to know the truth, because by knowing that truth we are indeed set free. Help us, Lord, to believe that each and every day of our life, and to share that message of salvation with those around us. We pray all these things in your name. Amen. There is one foundational truth, one aspect of our faith that is found in the scriptures that is perhaps the most important, and it's that God loves you unconditionally. There's nothing that you can do, no work that you can perform, no merit that you can do to earn when it comes to the love, the mercy, and the forgiveness of Jesus. I hope that you've heard that here at St. Paul, and no doubt I have hammered that into the heads, especially early on during the confirmation classes that I had with the four confirmands this year. Because our relationship with God is not like our relationship with anybody else. There is no condition, there is no, if you do this for me, then I'll do this for you. That would be a condition. Rather, the Bible tells us that while we were still dead in our sins, Christ died for us. While you were still dead in your sinfulness, God so loved you that he sent his only begotten son to lay down his life as an unconditional sacrifice of love that you might have forgiveness, life, and salvation. But did you hear it this morning? I couldn't help but hear it when I read the gospel, both the first time when I was preparing for this morning, but also this morning as I read it aloud. That big conditional if that was spoken by Jesus. If. Now, today is Reformation Sunday. It's also, as I said at the beginning of worship, Confirmation Sunday. And so today, of all days, we especially celebrate the joy of the unconditional reality of our salvation. That we are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. But then listen to what Jesus says. If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. Did you catch that? One more time. If. It's just a simple two-letter word, but it's a word that involves condition. It's a term that is responsible for more heartache and trouble in life than we probably care to admit. And when we say things like, well, if you really love me, then you'll do this for me. When we say that to people around us, well, that's nothing more than something not being spoken out of love, but a sinful manipulation where we are trying to get people to do what we want them to do. So what is Jesus saying here? If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. Now, without question, the text is a condition. This is indeed a condition that Jesus is putting forth, but it's not a condition that regards our salvation. We have to look at exactly what the text is all about, what Jesus is saying, and who he's speaking to. Jesus here is speaking to a group of Jewish individuals who at one point had believed in them. In fact, if you probably had asked them at that moment, do you believe in Jesus? They probably would say that they still did believe. They believed that they were no doubt good Christians. 
But here's the deal. Jesus knows the truth. And so he drops this conditional bombshell on them by telling them if and only if they abide in his word, then will they truly be his disciples. In other words, to put it in more modern terms, Jesus is saying, you say that you believe this, but if you really did believe, you would abide in my word because that's what my disciples do. And so if you are not abiding in my word, then you are not one of my disciples. You can say all the right things. You can even try to do the right things by putting on a good show for the people around you. But you can't fool me, Jesus says. If you don't abide in my word, then you are not my disciples. It's just that simple. And so then this brings us an excellent point to consider this morning. Because every one of us looks down our noses and can look down our noses at those faithless fools. What does it mean to abide? What does it mean to abide? So often, we take this term and we associate it with the idea of obedience. Obedience to a law or a rule or a set of rules. And we like to think, yeah, we are good law-abiding citizens. We abide by the law. We like to follow the rules. That's what we believe. Okay, let me ask you a question. How many of you love the IRS? Think about that for a moment. If I could see you and you were able to raise your hand, I'm sure that none of you would like to say that you love the IRS or that you would even be willing to defend the IRS, even if it meant death. Shocking, none of us would probably say something like that. And yet, we all abide by the law. We follow the rules, don't we? We all pay our taxes. No one probably really likes it. We'd rather keep our own hard-earned money. I'm sure some might even be okay with getting rid of the IRS altogether. And yet we still follow their rules. Why? Because we are law-abiding citizens. But Jesus never said to abide by his word. He never says to remain close to his word. It's very clear. We are to abide in his word. Now, those small two-letter words make a world of difference. The difference is as simple as this. Abiding by a pool or abiding in a pool. If I'm abiding by the pool, then guess what? I'm not swimming. If you abide by the word of Christ, then you are doing nothing more than walking alongside of it. If you are abiding by something, you're close to it. You're familiar with it. You may even be very fond of it and have a lot of knowledge about it. In fact, if you abide by something, if you abide by the people that you are around, those people may think that you are linked to them or linked to that which you are abiding to. But here's the deal. You're not. To abide in the word is to be immersed in it, to be swallowed up in it, to be enveloped in it, to dwell in it, to remain in it, to live in it. Abiding in the word means letting God lead. Now, Martin Luther knew this all too well. The religious establishment of his day in the Catholic Church was none too pleased with good old Uncle Marty because he wasn't abiding by their rules. Instead, a Luther abided in God's word because he trusted in God above all things, even if it meant death. Here I stand, Luther says, even if I am proven or unless I am proven wrong by scripture. Here I stand, unless I am proven wrong by scripture and the clear word of God, I can do no other. He was remaining in God's word. And Luther lived the rest of his life, guess what, as a wanted man, a man who was hated by many people up until the day of his death. And yet he never wavered in his trust. He never recanted or kowtowed to those around him. Instead, he abided in the unconditional love, mercy, and grace of his heavenly Father, no matter what challenge he faced. 
The truth is, I don't think any of this can say this of ourselves. We have failed to abide in God's word. We have failed to trust in God above all things. We have doubted God's will. We have not trusted in his word. And we have questioned the things that God is doing. And we ask questions like, does God really know what he's doing? When things don't go our way, we say things like, well, maybe God doesn't even love us. Maybe we need a little bit more faith. Maybe we need to do more works. Maybe we're not abiding by the rules and the laws as best as we could or should. Maybe God is not abiding by the rules. My fellow redeemed, the truth is, I cannot make you believe. I cannot make you abide in the word and in the joy of Jesus. Only the Holy Spirit can do that by his word. Faith comes through hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. That's what the scripture tells us. So hear it. Hear it today. The unconditional love of God was made flesh for you. And he hung on a criminal's cross to die for you for your sin and for the sins of the whole world. The unconditional love comes to you at the baptismal font where your Savior brings you his Good Friday victory over sin, death, and the power of the devil by drowning you and putting to death all of your sin and then clothing you in his righteousness. The unconditional love of Jesus comes to you from his throne of grace where He brings you his very body and blood for the forgiveness of sins, not because you've earned it, not because you deserve it, but because you need it. And as disciples, we come to him in repentance today and every day of our life. And he comes to us unconditionally to feed us and nourish us with his gifts of forgiveness and even life itself. Brothers and sisters, when you rightly recognize and understand and hear this truth of the gospel, how can you not want to abide in and dwell in the loving hands of your heavenly Father? And maybe even more importantly, how can you not want everyone to share in, abide in, and dwell in this blessed reality? Children of God, you are free. The Son has set you free. And he continues to make you free in his word and in his sacrament. So live in that freedom today and every day of your life. Abide in that freedom of Jesus Christ purchased for you by his very life, death, and resurrection. And may there be no doubt that you are a follower of Jesus who is set free to abide in him and in his word of life and peace. May God grant that unto us all. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, may it guard and keep your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. At this time we would normally be gathering up our offerings, but because you are not able to be here with us at this time, we are encouraging you to continue to be faithful and cheerful in your giving unto the Lord. That truly is an act of worship and a ministry of the church, our offering is, just as we have been hearing about these last several weeks. There's a couple ways that you can continue to do that. You can mail it here to the church office or drop it off. You can even go online to our website and give online in a very easy and safe way. Or you can text the word GIVE, G-I-V-E, to 989-309-2496. Also, we want to remind you that hopefully you received by mail um, your commitment forms. And those commitment forms are an opportunity for you to make your commitment unto the Lord. It's a commitment between, between you and God and no one else. And it's an opportunity for you to say that, hey, yes, God has given me everything. Everything that I have is a gift of God, and I'm going to return a portion of that back to him for the sake of his church to continue to do mission and ministry. And we're not talking about just money. We're also talking about your time, your talents, 
and even the time that you remain in God's word and in the study of his word. And so we hope that you had an opportunity to read through that letter, to look over the commitment form, to pray about it, to consider it, and to talk about it as a family and make a commitment unto God that best fits you and your family. If you have not mailed that back to the church, we would encourage you to do that. You can also drop it off. If you need another form, please contact the church office. We can drop one off at your house, drop one in the mail, or even uh, email one to you. Again, thank you so much for, for your commitment to Christ and to his church as we seek to be the hands and feet of Jesus um, to not only the people in our midst, but to the people within our community as well. Having made our gifts and our commitments unto the Lord, uh, we go to our God with our stewardship litany and in the singing of our offertory this morning. Lord God, we thank you that you have chosen and called us to be stewards of your abundance, the caretakers of all you have entrusted to us. We ask that you would bless us with zeal to be your stewards. Lord, by your grace, we pray that we will be the faithful stewards you want us to be. Help us understand that all we have is received from your hand. Lord God, direct us always to use your gifts to us wisely and teach us to share them generously. Send the Holy Spirit to work through us, bringing your message to those we serve. Lord, may our faithful stewardship bear witness to the love of Jesus Christ in our lives. Lord God, we thank you for your grace, which enables us to understand that we were created for your purpose, not ours. Change our mindset from what we want to do to what you want us to do. Lord, place in us a desire to please you in all that we think, say, and do. Lord God, you direct us in your word to give freely because we have received freely. By your grace, make us channels through which your blessings can flow. Help us to be faithful stewards of God's gifts. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving. I will call on the name of the Lord. I will pick the cup of salvation and will call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people in the courts of the Lord's house in the midst of you Having confidence in our justification by grace through faith and having access to the Father in Jesus' name, let us turn therefore our hearts in prayer on behalf of ourselves, the church, and all people according to their needs. O oh, Almighty God, you have shown your faithfulness by raising up those in every generation who call your church to repentance and renewal. Continue to raise up voices in our own day who herald the truth of your word and proclaim the faith in purity and truth against all enemies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Everlasting Father, you do not desire the death of the sinner, but want all to come to faith and life in Christ. Raise up faithful pastors who will preach your word without fail, and teach the doctrine delivered to the saints, that many may hear and believe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful Lord, your word has been the light and salvation through the ages, Help us to bring your grace to those in darkness and grant them freedom through the forgiveness of their sins. Bless the missionaries serving far and near and the new congregations they establish in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of all power and might, you have established governments and the order of law for the protection of all people and to preserve the freedom to worship in you in spirit and truth. Grant our president, our governor, the Congress of the United States, 
the legislature of our own state, wisdom, humility, and integrity, that all may enjoy true justice and the protection of life from its conception to natural end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy and gracious God, your power is revealed chiefly in showing mercy to those in need. Give to the sick healing, to the troubled peace, to the grieving comfort, and to the dying peace. Hear us first on behalf of those we name in our hearts before you. According to your gracious promise, grant patience to those in tribulation and trial. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have given great gifts to your people and provided resources to provide for their own needs and for the poor. Bless the agencies and programs of your church by which your people give aid and support to those in need. Help us to provide gainful employment to all people, that they may enjoy the fruits of their labor and honor you with the works of their hands. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O faithful Lord, throughout the ages you spoke hope through the prophets until that day when you delivered up your own Son to be our Savior and Redeemer. Bless those who are just learning the gospel, and bless us with the desire to know and keep your word. Encourage your people to avail themselves of the grace of confession and absolution, so that they may forgive one another and live in unity of spirit through the bond of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Almighty God and Father, we pray you to grant us all things that will be benefit us in body and soul, and to prevent anything harmful to us or to our salvation. Teach us to live in contentment with your will and purpose, and in the freedom you alone supply to serve you with all our heart, mind, body, and soul. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And together we pray now the prayer that our Lord himself has taught to us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give to you his peace. Amen. We close with our final hymn, Go My Children With My Blessing. Thank you.
children fed and nourished closer to me. Grow in love and love by serving joyful and free. Hear my spirit power filled you hear his tender children fed and nourished, joyful and free. I, the Lord, will bless and keep you and give you peace. I, the Lord, will smile upon you. Blessings to you and your family as you begin another week. Again, thank you so much for worshiping us with us this morning um, as we gather to hear God's word um, and to, uh, to be reminded that we must abide in God's word um, and that we have been saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ alone. Uh, just a couple of announcements, some things to make you aware of as you begin this week. Um, uh, again, just one other, uh, one more reminder about your commitment forms. If you need another one, I know we've had a couple people said, Hey, I misplaced mine. I, I don't remember where it was. I never received it in the mail. Just call the church office. We'd be more than happy to drop one in the mail to you, um, or even send you one via email. Um, also coming up on the 31st of October is going to be our Trunk or Treat event. Um, it is going to be an event this year that is going to be inside and outside, um, for the sections that is inside, we are going to um, encourage social, social distancing, but inside there's going to be uh, some games that are spread out throughout the building for, um, for our children. There's going to be um, some individuals who don't want to be outside that want to hand out candy, um, so they'll be able to, to do that in and out. Um, so if you have children, grandchildren, neighbors um, that have kids, invite them to come here. This is kind of a great one-stop shop so that mom and dad don't have to run all over these country roads and find a house with the light on. Um, they can come here and get all kinds of candy um, and enjoy um, All Hallows' Eve or, or Halloween um, on Saturday the 31st from 5 p.m. to 6.30 um, also, if you would love to, to join us in, in handing out candy, be it outside by decorating your trunk or your hatchback or, or your, your pickup truck, or if you'd like to de decorate a table in t inside and just hand out candy that way, um, we would love to have you do that. Uh, just make sure that you're here around 4.30 on that day. Um, also, we are supporting our missionaries. We have some missionaries that are in Puerto Rico that we have supported over the last year and a half, maybe a little longer. Um, it is uh, Pastor James and Crystal Neuendorf. And um, so coming up on November 8th, we are going to be having a bake sale that is hosted by Dorcas. All monies that are raised on that day um, are going to go to our missionaries to help them do their work in Puerto Rico. So if you're here that day and you'd like to pick up some, some baked goods, that would be wonderful. If you're not here and you'd like to contribute, you can certainly just uh, uh, mail a gift to the church. Just make sure that you let us know that it is for um, the missionaries um, uh, and, and part of that bake sale. Um, lastly, um, as we continue to reach out into, into our community to help those that are in need and to assist other organizations that are doing good in our community, um, we are in need of some people that are willing to serve at the Friendship Room, which is part of St. Bernard's in Alpena, from 1 to 3.30 every fourth Friday, every fourth Friday. 
We are still in need of some volunteers for uh, November 13th and also for December 11th. If you're interested in helping out, call the church office um, or even call Stephanie Bookinger um, to sign up. Or if you want to know uh, what you have to do and, and what that looks like, um, you can give her a call and she'd be more than happy to instruct you on what that looks like and how you can get involved in being the hands and feet of Jesus. Again, God's blessings to you and your family. You are in our prayers and in my prayers today and every day. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.